Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of March 25th. We're going to move some items around on the agenda due to some guests who haven't arrived yet. So I'd like to start by going to the second agenda item, which is the Ruth Pfeiffer Scholarship. This is an, an annual scholarship that the Board of Selectmen give to a student um, at the award ceremony in June at the DS. Um, I've had the honor of doing it for seven or eight years now, and uh, it's, it's wonderful. It goes to a student that has just uh, been um, an amazing achiever um, in the areas of academics, the arts, and um, sports. And there are some amazing, amazing uh, young ladies and, and uh, gentlemen who have received this over the years. Um, it started back in 1992 with a $20,000 donation uh, from Ruth Pfeiffer. Um, we're allowed to use the uh, interest from that uh, um, donation. We're not allowed to touch the $20,000 endowment. So what has happened over the years as interest rates have fallen um, is that the amount of funds that we have available to uh, distribute have fallen as well. Um, yeah, we, back in 2008, we actually were getting about 5% on our money, and we were able to give a $1,000 scholarship. Um, we've been reducing it ever since. And I think we have a sheet in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, last year, uh, we gave a $200 scholarship. And even with that, we had earned only um, uh, $103, $103 on interest. So um, we currently have uh, $1,329 available to us. Um, the expectation would be that we're only going to be getting 50 to 60 dollars next year as well, so it keeps decreasing. Um, so unfortunately, I would recommend that we might want to decrease the, um, the scholarship award even more from the 200 that was last year. Um, if I may just ask a quick question about the, um, the gift itself. So you spoke of, it's a $20,000 base, never to touch that, and there's no alternative to that language. You just can never sit there. So you just have to wait until that interest accrues back to make a substantial and or a gift. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, I remember the discussion from last year, Carol, and it was painful, quite honestly, to reduce the gift because you'd love to reward uh, the, the uh, recipient yep. with a bigger number. But uh, unfortunately, in today's economic times where the returns are so small, I think we should keep it at a, 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 the same level as last year. Um, so we have monies in the future to give until such time as the returns start in improving. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have to be decreased even more. But I think we could, you know, if you want to do one more year of 200, that's fine. But the following year is probably going to have to go down again. So. I would do one more year because yeah. if you look at the yield curve, Supposed, you know, rates are supposed to start ticking. Yeah, our, right. our, our money is so conservatively uh, right. yeah, that's true. In, uh, invested in the town's it funds is. that it, it's, it's going to take a while to uh, to blow anything back up. But um, so, Jim, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I will make the motion that um, we keep the award at two hundred dollars, which would be the same number as last year, uh, for the scholarship to be. Uh, given out in June, I think, at the uh, Seniors Banquet. Is that correct? At the award dinner. The award dinner. The award dinner the night yeah. before graduation. I'd second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mona, I'm going to give you my packet of information on the Pfeiffer Fund. Okay. Yeah, you have a good one. I never saw it. Yeah, so so well, that's a good one. Next time we want yeah. to next year, I'll okay. include the, uh, the backup letters and all. You really have been an award person over the years. <laughs> but I'm fully disposing of my so. files as well, so there goes one file. <laughs> you could be a writing candidate, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, James is here. Welcome. So Doug Lawrence and James Stewart are here from the Warren Committee. And uh, the first item on the agenda was a follow-up to a brief discussion we had with the members of the Warren Committee at our last meeting who attended. And that had to do with whether there are any ballot questions for the town election on May 18th, other than the um, uh, election of the open uh, positions that are being voted upon. 
and uh, the Warren Committee at the time thought that there were none, but uh, our, their esteemed chair was not there. So, James. As no, there are none at this point. Okay. Thank you for asking. Okay. So it will be a, a very um, uh, easy town election ballot that everybody will be receiving in the mail. Uh, there are probably a dozen or so positions that are open. I said last time that I thought the listing from the caucus was on the website, but it's not there yet. Uh, I assume it will be posted sometime next week when the whole process um, is complete. So that's that. Are we going to have to sign something on that? The next election warrant, yes. I think next, next meeting. meeting. Okay. <clears throat> so we go to the Boston King presentation. Um, a sad thing uh, to have to do tonight. So uh, back in um, 2009, okay, back in 2009, um, up at an antique store in Maine, a Dover resident found a cane that said Town of Dover on it. And uh, he bought it and brought it back to Dover and we contacted Elisha Lee, who's chair of the Dover Historical so uh, Society. And he did a little research and discovered that back in, and I, I will read from this, back in August of 1909, Edwin Grozier, publisher of the Boston Post newspaper, had canes made for presentation to the selectmen in 700 towns throughout Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Rhode Island. The canes were to be awarded by the selectmen to the oldest male registered voted, voter in each community. While in the possession of that most senior citizen, the cane was to retain, remain the property of the selectmen, and upon his death, it was to be passed to a successor. In 1930, the tradition was amended to make women eligible as well. So clearly, at some point over the decades, the cane had been lost and found its way to an antique store up in Maine, which I think is an absolutely great story. So back in 2009, it came back to us, and we have uh, re-implemented um, the in initial purpose of the cane, and it has, in fact, been uh, given uh, to the oldest male or female living in the town of Dover. Um, in order to ensure that the cane doesn't find its way back to an antique store in Maine, <laughs> the selectman back in 2009 decided to put it in a beautiful glass box which is hung in the uh, uh, social area of the library on the main floor. And then there's a plaque beneath it where um, every time the, the cane uh, symbolically changes hands, the name of the individual is on there. So the cane was presented within the last 18 months or so, I think, to uh, Barbara Larkin, um, who's a neighbor of mine. And I had the privilege of, of giving the, uh, telling Barbara about that. Uh, Barbara passed away a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's a long time, long time resident of Dover. She worked in the, at the schools and uh, was beloved by many. Um, so we are sad with her passing. Uh, and, the, and what we do is basically give, make a resolution and put this in a frame and it's, it's in color and we present it to the, uh, the oldest senior in Dover. So with uh, Bunny's passing, uh, the oldest senior is now uh, Margaret Peggy Close, who was born um, on October 14th, 1914. So um, upon a resolution, we will be um, uh, presenting this to her as well, and I will read the resolution. It says, whereas on August 2nd, 1909, Mr. Edwin A. Grozier, publisher of the Boston Post, forwarded to the Board of Selectmen in 700 towns in New England, a gold-headed ebony cane with the request that it be presented with the compliments of the Boston Post to the oldest male citizen of the town, to be used by him as long as he lives in the town, and at his passing, passed down to the oldest citizen of the town. And whereas the Board of Selectmen understands that in 1930, eligibility for the cane was open to female citizens, and whereas the Board of Selectmen and Dover Historical Society are the trustees of the cane and are empowered to pass it on to the oldest citizen, and therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Selectmen and the Dover Historical Society that Margaret Peggy Close, who was born on October 14, 1914, is hereby declared the oldest applicant for the citizen of Dover and is hereby presented with the Boston Post cane, which will be displayed prominently for viewing by the citizens of Dover. Signed this 25th day of March, 2015, and the witness thereof of the town of Dover and its board of selectmen. 
So, um, do I have a motion to um, present the Boston Cane to Peggy Close? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, should we sign this later? Yes. So it's a little um, more uh, control yeah. in line because I know it's a special pen for yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's wonderful. Since 2009, uh, has, uh, has this turned over maybe five times? Six? Six? Yeah. Six? Yeah. yeah. I think it's a wonderful tradition. Yeah, it's a great tradition. It's so nice to find it again and, mm -hmm. and uh, for Elisha to do the research on it. It's great. The do protocol was broken tonight. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the age. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> 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 so you're in trouble for that I'm one. I'm in trouble for that one. <laughs> the age of. The, the recipient. The new recipient. I didn't hear that. I no, okay, that was not well. <laughs> Bunny was, Bunny was 101, I believe. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda, Mercury Recovery Program flyer mailing. So in our packet, we have a, uh, a note from uh, Dr. Barbara Oshek, the chair of the Board of Health, requesting permission for the, uh, from us to have the attached Mercury Recovery Program flyer sent out with the next tax bill. I think we've done this before. I believe we have. Year. Not every year, but every couple of years. Mm -hmm. So this is the flyer, the Mercury Recovery Program, which of course Mercury is very harmful to human health. Thermostats, thermometers, button cell batteries, mercury switches, fluorescent lamps. Is this part of the Medfield uh, Hazardous Day? Uh, it is not. Okay, thank you. I think they have a, I think there's a box at the transfer station as well as a box at the Board of Health office. Yes. Uh, for mm -hmm. folks who want to do it, this. It's a lot of people don't realize that fluorescent lamps contain mercury. Yes, the news, yes. Right. Yeah. And um, you can actually also return them to home people. They have collections. Rick, can you do a, uh, a close up of this? Sure. I'm sure it's on the Board of Health website as well. Look at that. Down. There we wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Pick up the <laughs> <laughs> Raise that piece of paper. <laughs> it's crooked. There we go. There we go. Another one. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so we certainly know that when it comes to opening mail, at least everybody in Dover opens their tax bill. Absolutely. So it's probably a good vehicle to this. So the Board of Health has asked us for permission. Do we have to uh, vote on this? I do. I yeah. make the motion that the Board of Health uh, be allowed uh, to attach the Mercury Recovery Program fly into the next tax bill. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oops. Yes, I would. Thank you. I, I saw you reading that. Oh, that's it. Okay. Special licenses. Okay. Special licenses. We have a bunch. So we have one on um, April 11th, which is the Charles River School um, annual uh, dinner auction. We have one on May 9th uh, for the Dover Foundation celebration at. Hmm? Craft Hall. Oh, Craft Hall. Where is that? Oh. 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 You mean the one that's highlighted? Yeah. yeah. The Craft Hall. In, in green. In green. <laughs> and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from the Connor Center. So I'll just read the dates. April 17th, April 19th, May 9th, May 23rd, May 24th, May 27th, May 29th, May 30th, and May 31st. Bunch of weddings, some meetings, some retreats. So that's 11 in total. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have a lot to sign. A lot.
I'd say. <laughs> okay, so Jim needs to do it. There you go. You may have put in them out of order, so That's I apologize. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, reserve fund transfers. Mr. Dolly. Yes. I mean, Mr. Ramsey. Yes. <laughs> we, we have two reserve fund transfer requests, Madam Chair, uh, from the building department for uh, heating repairs over at the Carroll Community Center, for which were prior notice. Uh, one was for some heating pipes that had leaked in room 105, which is a staff room over at the CDC. And then uh, another repair of the breach for boiler number one in the boiler room. Uh, so the total of the amount requested in this reserve fund transfer is $13,394 to cover those two repairs. And this was the, uh, the, the prior notice that we talked about last week? Yeah, it's on yes. the back. Oh, it's on okay. the back. Yep. Okay, we right. double side everything we can. Okay, add. right. Yep. Okay. The other one from the building department, uh, there was no prior notice for, and this is uh, $14,497.50, which was spent removing snow and ice from various town buildings in the recent severe weather. Is this an expense that might get reimbursed by FEMA, depending on what they choose to do? Or is uh, it, it's possible. Uh -huh. I don't know whether this particular t type of activity will be eligible, but uh, it certainly made sense to us as a precaution. And uh, I think as a result of having done it, we, we had minimal damage to our... Huh? So that was the roof uh, removal, the roof, uh, snow and the snow roofs. and ice off the roofs. Yeah, I saw them doing it one Saturday on the townhouse, and I was thinking it's one thing to do it on an asphalt roof, but with those... Um, Slate tiles. They must have been very careful. That's tricky. Yeah. Now, why wouldn't this go through the snow and ice removal? Just generically asking. I mean, you, you could do it that way, but this is an extraordinary expense. I mean, snow and ice. Typically, what we mean by that is road removal. Okay. You could have done it here, but because it was the roofs and it's very unusual, we thought it best to keep it. I keep the job point with the Warren Committee tonight when they discuss it. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that, Dave. Okay, well, let's take them, and there's a third one. Let's take them one at a time, then. Um, so the $13,394 request for the repair of room 105 at the community center. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's just the one. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. James and Doug, do you have any questions on this one? Since Mr. Ramsey is here? No? Okay. Not on television either. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Lucky you. You know what I'm saying. I asked it for that reason. So I know later. The second one is the $14,497.50 for the snow and ice removal. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Third one is five thousand dollars from the water department to cover the water charges and repairs to the water leak on Center Street, and there had been a prior notice on this back in August. Yes, and the prior notice was for eighty-two hundred dollars. This one is five. That is correct, Mr. Bell. Okay. So well, this is not the first leak. On Center Street, correct? I think it's the second, second league. Yeah. Uh, and there's a third one over there right now, but that one is not ours. That's the school's. That's the school, school the Charles, Charles, River. Charles River. It's on their side. So what, what, what was this? Thank is you, this, Robin. I was just going to just the age of the pipes, or? It's really correct? difficult to say. Okay. I believe in one of the two cases, excuse me, we actually found a rather significant sized boulder that had punctured the copper pipe. 
Hmm. It depends a lot on the quality of the installation and the backfill. If the backfill is not the right material, you know, rocks move through the soil in the freeze and thaw cycle, and they will come in contact with any size pipe and they will rupture it. Hmm. Um, this was installed long before I came to town, so I had no way to know whether they just used bony backfill or they used sand. Or probably wasn't sand. Hmm. Okay. So, do I have a motion to a uh, second for five thousand dollars to the water department? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, was it the Dover Water Company that put the pipes under Center Street, or is it the town? We would have installed the distribution system, whether the actual connection was installed by us or not, okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So this great history and how everything's been uh, right. installed. Right, I was just curious, right. And the quality of water department um, distribution system installation has improved dramatically in the last 20 years. In the old days, lots of different things happened. Okay. Okay. Okay, last item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes of March 10th. I did not get a copy oh. in my folder. Unless... Because we thought you had them memorized? <laughs> yeah. Let me just see if it's stuck on the back or something. Nope, I absolutely didn't get them. No big deal. Here you go. I did Mr. That. Ramsey had two copies. March 10th, thank you. That was a very interesting um, meeting. I thought the presentation on OPEP was very good. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. I have no uh, suggestions and no changes. Thank you. Okay. So, do we have a second to approve the minutes of May 10th as submitted? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to get my name in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just wanted to remind everybody again that the town meeting is on May 4th um, at 7 p.m. down at the region. And the town election is on May 18th, uh, all day, at the Great Hall and Townhouse. And um, townspeople will be voting at town election to fill the open positions of, of the elected officials for town government, various boards and committees. Well, one of the things I'd just like to make note of, and uh, I got the COA newsletter today, um, I believe the COA van is up and operable starting yesterday. Mm -hmm in their inaugural trip, and I encourage everyone to use that, uh, or the eligible uh, uh, town's person, to use it as much as possible. Where did it go for its first I, I wasn't privy to all the details, and, and uh, quite honestly. I honest. hope you're going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point. I will dig deep on this one. Okay. Do you know where it went, Mr. Ray? It went to a luncheon function. Okay. Huh? But a lot of hard work uh, on a number of people went into that, including David. Thank you very much. Craig Hughes, uh, COA members, board members, so great result. It, it was a fascinating process of, of, uh, of government at its most red tape bureaucratic. <laughs> very, so, very true. Thank you for spearheading that through the system. My pleasure. It wasn't an easy, uh, <laughs> an easy system to work. And thank you to the town report committee for noticing that in certain write-ups there was a conflict for how many seats the van had. Oh. <laughs> that was a good catch. I, it was yep. a really good catch, yes. Yep. How many seats does the van have? Eight. 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 Yeah. Huh. Certain write-ups mentioned 12. Oh. <laughs> a minibus. Uh. <laughs> Is it between a van and a minibus? Right. <laughs> I thought that was an excellent catch. It was. That's um, my citizen's comment. Thank you. 
I, I guess I should mention also that the uh, Springdale Study Committee, which uh, was created to look at how to uh, recommendations on how to use 46 uh, Springdale that we acquired uh, in January after town meeting in November, um, has created their subcommittees, and the subcommittee meetings are, are meeting. There were two last week. There was one um, uh, Monday morning or Tuesday morning and uh, one this evening. And there has been attendance by interested citizens, so which has been wonderful. So I, I urge citizens to take a look at the website to sign up for the email notifications of meetings and to attend. And it's very important for these subcommittees to get a lot of input in order to do their job correctly. And they do appreciate attendance by citizens of Dover. Did they get a good turnout for their open houses? Didn't they have the Springdale subcommittee? And I'm not. Didn't, didn't they have an information session? Uh, I think they did. I think they had two. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, those. Yes, right. 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 <coughs> I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, oh, yes. I'm sorry. I do know. Let me think that. I do know. Those were like last month or something right, like that. Right. No. Okay. They had, I think, maybe two or three on they one and maybe three or four on another. Okay. So um, a, little, a little disappointing. Yeah. But the... Um, but some of the subcommittees have actually had better, okay. better involvement. That's, Maybe because the good. subcommittees are focused. Right. There's a subcommittee on uh, open space and recreation, a subcommittee on senior needs, a subcommittee on development, um, and there's a fourth one that escapes me at the moment. Um, so uh, I think maybe folks that are interested in those particular items okay. are well. more likely to come. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else? That is it from my standpoint. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone.